Hello and welcome to Man's Model Moments. Now, I imagine most modellers are not familiar with the Zhongshan Yatai Electric Appliances Company Limited, based in China. Yet many of you will have made their kits. That's because they sell under a variety of brand names, notably Trumpeter, Hobby Bus, and I Love Kit. They are a Chinese manufacturer that started up in the mid to late 1990s and made a big entrance into the modeling world with their extensive use of CAD modeling and advanced slide molds for their plastic kits, removing some limitations of what can be produced by traditional injection molding. They've added almost 2,000 kits to their Trumpeter range, another 900 or so under the Hobby Boss logo, and about 50 as I Love Kit in the intervening 20 odd years since their inception. Their designs have won several awards along that journey, building themselves a solid reputation for detail and accuracy. They cover a lot of Chinese, Russian and Soviet subjects that aren't necessarily well represented elsewhere, but not exclusively so by any means. Now, I've got several Trumpeter and Hobby Boss kits, and have to say I've always been impressed by their detail. My experience isn't extensive, but I've not had a kit produced by them yet, which I've not been happy with. So with that aside, let's look at what they are bringing to us in 2023. I'll be using my usual format of starting with new toolings, then kits with new parts, but being a relatively young company, they don't really do reissues yet, but they do seem to have a habit of announcing things that then don't get released, or at least don't get released when they say they're going to. So instead of reissues, I'll cover previously announced kits that are appearing again, even though they've not been seen before. If we were to take this at face value, there are around 250 new kits announced here. That's around half of those, just over half of those from Trumpeter, 90 plus from Hobby Boss, and over 21 from I Love Kit. Now it is a little difficult to work out exact numbers as some new announcements aren't even in their 2023 to 24 catalog as new releases, but in any way it's a lot. Now figuring out exactly where a future kit sits here is also a bit of a murky business. So although I'll do my best, some of these may be in the wrong area, because even the information from the company itself can be contradictory. Of course, the safest bet is to wait until they actually come out for sale, but where's the fun in that? I'm also not going to mention kits that were already released in 2022 and are readily available, yet still listed in the catalogue as new. As usual, in each section I'll go from the larger scale downwards, and I'll cover releases under the three different brands in each scale as we go along. Now, Jean Shan Yatai is quite a difficult mouthful to say repeatedly for a native English speaker like myself, so I'll just refer to them as ZY when I'm not using their brand names. So with all of those caveats and the uncertainty surrounding them aside, let's try to dig into this in a bit more detail, shall we? So we're going to start off with new toolings and straight in at 1 16th scale, the big AFV armor modeling scale. Used to be Tamiya were the king of the hill with their remote controlled versions of the Tiger and the Sherman and so on. But ZY have been adding to their range through the three brands for quite a while now. And this year is no different. And we'll see that again as we come through the, the other categories. But to start with, we have these Sidkovitz uh, 251 stroke D and 251 stroke 22, the anti-tank version. We then go to uh, the Panzer 1, the Panzer 1 Aus V, the Flak Panzer version of that, the Panzer Jäger, and also the SIG, the artillery version, 15 centimeter artillery gun. So I'm sure these will be welcomed by big scale armor modelers. 1 16th is a big scale, and if you've got the 251 with a bunch of 1 16th scale troops, whether those are commercially available or 3D printed, that's going to be quite a big chunky kind of subject for a diorama. But I can see that um, for a lot of people. Not my scale, way too big, um, but interesting nonetheless. So then we go to 1 32nd scale 
with the Douglas TBD-1 Devastator. The Devastator is something we're going to see in a number of releases here from ZY across their brands, so keep watching out for those in other sections here. So 30 second scale, quite a big scale. TBD-1 is not a small aircraft, it's not a fighter, obviously a dive bomber. So again, probably going to be of interest for a lot of people, I imagine American modelers, uh, those with a particular interest in US military history, are going to be quite interested in this one. So that's the only release in 132nd scale, but going down to 135th scale, very similar, we start off with Hobby Boss now. And Hobby Boss, we have several releases. Uh, we have the 63-2 APC, the YW531C APC, the V300 90mm Cockerel Gun, the PLA ZTQ-15 Light Tank, and then we also have a release which isn't actually in their catalogue, which is the 9M96 uh, S350E Vityaz. So these are all modern military subjects, not particularly ones that I've got to focus on. Although the PLA ZTQ-15 Light Tank, again, not a subject I'd typically be interested in, but that looks quite actually quite nice, quite interesting. So quite a good range there. Again, I mentioned before that uh, ZY tend to cover a lot of subjects which aren't well covered by Western companies, a lot of you know Russian and Chinese different variants. So if you've been waiting for some of these, I don't know a great deal about these APCs, for instance, the Vityaz or the Light Tank, but those are all pretty well represented, obviously, now. Then under the I Love Kit brand, which <laughs> has to be one of the strangest names for a company, it's kind of very transliterated Chinese, it sounds, we have quite a big kit to start with, the GMC DUKW, the Duck, the old landing craft. This is not a small craft by itself, quite a big long thing, so in 35th scale this is going to be quite a big chunky kit, and it has the trailer on it as well. Again, I can see dioramas around this, so that's quite an interesting thing. You could have one coming out of the sea, you could have one, you know, crossing a river, you could have it coming out, you could, all kinds of possibilities exist with this. And then you go on to more modern subjects with the M55-203 self-propelled howitzer, the Dingo 2 recce version, that's the optoelectronic reconnaissance version, and the Dingo 2 GE, the Patsy. Again, more modern subjects. I tend not to go too much into modern armour, but again, relatively interesting. And then we have... The US C-RAM with Hempt A3 anti-aircraft uh, minigun. This actually, again, isn't in the catalogue, but it is as a new announcement for 2023. So just another one. I don't know whether it's mentioned in the 2022 catalogue, but again, just a, another example of how it's a bit difficult to actually find out what is a new release here uh, and what isn't. You know, some new releases or some of these new toolings that we will see later on have been previously announced. They've never been seen, but they have been announced, so I couldn't tell you what the status of those is. Moving on then to the Trumpeter brand, we have a couple of helicopters, a couple of versions of the Huey, the UH-1B, and the gunship version of that same aircraft. 35th scale, I get why they're 35th and not 32nd, because these are more army subjects. You can have these, again, dioramas with troops, um, you know, parked with tanks and tents or whatever. And I can imagine a lot of Vietnam kind of dioramas and things with these. Um, again, not a subject that I'm particularly looking at, um, but I can see there'd be quite a lot of interest in those. Now, a Huey a helicopter in 35th scale, I imagine, again, it's going to be quite big. So be interesting to see what that actually looks like when it comes out. Switching then back to more traditional uh, AFV uh, for 35th scale, we have the NASAMS, again, quite a topical subject. This is the Norwegian, the Advanced Surface to Air Missile System. I mean, it's just kind of a box <laughs> with a load of missile tubes in, so I don't really uh, go for, for these subjects. But again, very topical, especially with the, the recent incidents uh, with the, the Reaper drone and the SU-27s. Let's see how that comes up, but uh, obviously tensions still pretty high around the Ukraine. Um, so the NASAMS is a very topical subject. Sticking with self-defense and uh, air cover systems, we have the Iron Dome air defense system and the Russian tracked Pantsir infrared short-range missile system. We then actually go to AFBs themselves. 
We have Russian Object 477, which is quite a an interesting subject. These are the kinds of things that I do like, the more the what-ifs, the development, the projects, the things that never were. Those things usually, because they often look slightly wacky, makes them a little bit more unusual, uh, a little bit more interesting for me. So that is something I could see if it was a reasonable price and I saw it and the mood took me, I, I could pick that up. But I have a bit of a, a strange one. We have the Kanonen und Flakwagen. This is a train-based system. Trumpet do do a number of these in 70 second scale as well, and we'll come to those. But yeah, not a subject that I'm particularly interested in. A lot of these do tend to be just armoured boxes with, with bits stuck on and are not really a, a train modeler. But again, I can see the appeal for dioramas, a um, quite unusual subject. So again, something a little bit different. Sticking with World War II, Germans and more unusual subjects, we have the Flakrakata Rheintocker 1. That is not in the catalogue as a separate kit. It is a separate kit, it has been announced. And again, we'll come to this later in the uh, kits with new parts section. But again, not in the, the catalogue. But it is quite an interesting one that obviously the Germans were getting into air-to-air -air missiles and ground-to-air missiles, anti-aircraft missiles, towards the end of World War II. Um, they were quite far advanced in rocket technology. Obviously, Werner Braun ended up going to, to NASA and a lot of the, the rocket advances that were made by other nations after the war were fueled by ex-Nazi scientists. So... It's quite an interesting subject, quite unusual, seeing that development, and obviously it comes into the what-if section, but it's quite an interesting one. Stepping back to the, the modern day, we have the 2B26 122mm Grad K MLRS system, and the VBM Freckia armoured car. Again, these are modern subjects which I don't have a great deal of interest in, but again, I can see the appeal, and I'm sure there are a lot of modelers that will be looking forward to them. Stepping down a scale into 148th, again we start with Hobby Boss, and we have a couple of releases which I'm sure are going to interest a lot of people. The first is the B24J Liberator. Now in 48th scale, this must be an enormous kit. Uh, I've got a 72nd scale Academy Liberator, it is still pretty big in that scale, it's a pretty big bomber. So in 48th scale, it's going to be giant. Uh, I've never done a bomber in that scale, but wow. So I'm sure there'll be a lot of interest in that. And then we have four releases, which are versions of the Hawker Hurricane. And obviously one will be the base new tooling, and then there'll be new parts for the others. But these are all coming out at the same time, allegedly. So we have the Hawker Hurricane Mark 1, the Mark 2, the Mark 2 C Trop, and the Mark 2 D Trop. The Hurricane is often underrepresented. In a lot of historical debate, the Spitfire, of course, being the, the glory boy interceptor, it's a much nicer aircraft to fly, but of course the Hurricane did a, a huge amount of sterling work in the Battle of Britain, so a lot of people will be very happy to see this in 48 scale. There are a lot of 48 scale kits out there, so it'll be interesting to see what Trumpeter bring to the mix there. Next are a couple of releases. I mentioned the Devastator. Here we have the TBD-1 and the 1A versions of the Devastator in 48 scale this time from Hobby Boss. So before, this was from Trumpeter, the 32nd scale, and you see this quite a lot with uh, ZY, that they will have a, they obviously got a CAD model, which they produce in one scale, and then will change it to another scale, release both, um, either at the same or different times, under different brands, sometimes the same brand. And again, we'll see that later on as well. Devastator, as I mentioned, is quite a topical subject for the anniversary of the Battle of Midway, so... I can see a lot of appeal. 48 scale tends to be a popular aircraft scale. It's one of the most popular aircraft scales, so I can absolutely understand why they've done that. I can see a lot of people picking up the 48 scale, having a good experience with it, hopefully, and then going on and buying the 32nd scale. Maybe that's a strategy. We'll see. But interesting to see how both those aircraft now available in 48 scale. Hobby Boss then gives us a set of interesting releases in sticking with 48 scale, but now moving to armor. So 48 scale hasn't been a particularly popular scale for armor modelers. Um, Tammy have done some kits, there have been some out there uh, before. It's kind of a compromise between 72nd scale and 35th scale, the more traditional armor scale models. Um, but I absolutely understand why people would want them, because I myself have thought, well, why don't they go 48 scale? whatever 
I guess I want a diorama with both of them in. Both aircraft and armour. Uh, 35th, 32nd scales, a bit too big, and there's a bit of a mismatch there in the scales. 48th, perfect. So there are a whole bunch of releases here. So I'll run through them. All new toolings. There are the Panzer IV Aus F2, H and J. The Panther Aus A. I will murder the pronunciation of this, but the Panzer bio uh, that is the artillery spotting vehicle experimental version of the Panther, and the Flak Panzer V, so the Flak version of the Panther, again, an experimental thing. All quite nice, actually. I like the Panther and those two last ones. Really interesting. Then we have the Tiger One, the medium and late production, both those with Zimmerit. Another really interesting one from my point of view is the 128mm Sturner Emil. Uh, I've got the Trumpeter 135th scale kit of that. It is a big chunky thing and quite unusual, used on the Eastern Front. Only a few of them were produced. I think one is now in the Kubinka um, Tank Museum. Hopefully when things smooth over with Russia at some point in the future, I'd like to go there, see all those. They've got some really interesting vehicles, but that is an interesting one for me. The T-72BM. T90 and the cast turret version of the T90. Again, all quite topical. We've seen those used in Ukraine. So if you have an interest in those inherently or you know want to do something from the current conflict, those are all possibilities. We have the Leopard 2A4, the 2A5-6 and the EX version. Lastly, but certainly not least for me, it's probably one of my favourite tanks that I've never modelled and that is the Swedish Striv 103B and 103C. I think they're really interesting looking things. They look a bit like the Lancia Stratos that uh, Italiari are bringing out this year, so maybe it's something to do with wedge-shaped things, I don't know. But a couple of interesting tanks there, and the whole list of 48th, I mean, they've gone big scale, they've got a lot of 48th scale releases already under the Hobby Boss brand, so it'd be interesting to see you know, what actually makes it out from this list. Moving to Trumpeter in 48th scale, we then have the Fairy Battle Mark I, which I'm not that interested in, and the Ferry Fulmer Mark I, which was quite a successful aircraft, and I think it looks very elegant. So 48 scale Fulmer, I think, would be very well appreciated. I think there's only a couple of other kits, the MPM springs to mind. But I know that some people have had concerns with accuracy on British subjects or non-Soviet Chinese subjects in the past. I don't personally have any experience of that, but we'll have to see what they look like when they come out and how they're received. But the Fulmer, I think, is one that, that I might look at. Surprisingly, they've not released an IL-2 in 48 scale before, but they're correcting that now with the IL-2, the ground attack aircraft. And then we move to modern subjects with the Su-25 Frogfoot A, again, quite a topical subject, and the fierce Thunderbolt, the Z-10 Chinese attack helicopter. Dropping down again to 172nd scale this time, starting back with Hobby Boss. And surprise, surprise, we have the TBD 1 and the TBD 1A Devastator. So we have Devastators in 72nd, 48th, and 32nd scale, all new tools, um, presumably the same CAD models, just re engineered for each die size. Uh, obviously, the complexity, some simplification going down there, but it's an interesting strategy. Uh, I think it's a good one because it appeals then, you know, people say, well, I wish they'd done a 72nd scale or I wish they'd done a 48th or I wish they'd done something bigger. Well, you've got it all here, um, provided they release them, of course. Um, you also have a TBM-3 Avenger, which I think is quite a nice aircraft. It's sort of a, a strange looking, a bit tubby, um, but obviously very successful aircraft. And that's the last aircraft we have from Hyperboss before we go into the armor section. And we start off with one which isn't in the catalogue, which was announced, and this is the Panzer Jäger Triebwagen 51. It's announced, it's, some, as you can see, nice picture, uh, but nothing in the new catalogue uh, on that one. And then we go a little bit more modern uh, and have a whole suite of S-300, the Russian Air Defence System, releases. We got the 9A82 SAM, we have the 83, the 84, the 85 and the accompanying uh, radar system. I think this is quite interesting because you could potentially have an entire S300 site. So an S300 site consists of various ones of these missile systems, the larger and smaller ones for long and shorter range with the radar systems. 
which I think that could be quite an interesting setup. It would take quite a quite a bit of real estate, but in 72nd scale, that's not you know that's manageable. It's not too bad. Uh, we also have the Baz 64022 with the S400. So moving to the more modern, even though the S300 is current, S400 is obviously its replacement. And sticking with Russian subjects, we have 152mm SHK8 Dana, the Smirch M multiple rocket launcher, the Russian SS21 Scarab, and then moving to China, the DF41 ICBM. So of all of these, I think the, the DF41 ICBM for me is quite interesting because it's a huge missile. I remember seeing similar missiles in the 80s in the Red Square parades from the Soviet Union. And this is a kind of a similar thing. It's what we perceive as, as not necessarily the enemy, but our opponents in the world in the West. DF-41 is a huge ICBM, 72nd scale. Again, that becomes manageable. 35th scale it would just be huge. But that might be something I, I have a look at at some point. Then in the Trumpeter brand, we have the Lockheed S-3B Viking. And another one that's not mentioned in the catalogue, the M706 Commando Armoured Car in Vietnam. Interestingly, ZY do have a release under the Hobby Boss brand for this exact subject, but it's in 35th scale. So again, I think that strategy of using a single CAD model for perhaps a larger scale and then simplifying it down so it's then released later in smaller scale seems to be what happens at ZY and it seems to be a sound business strategy. We then have a couple of slightly unusual subjects. We did have one of these released last year. It is available at the moment. And these are a set of uh, Chinese manned submersibles. So these kind of research vessels. We have the Shenhai Yongxi and the FDZ man submersibles. That's all for 72nd scale. So then we move to 1144th and we have the Yan Y20 military transport aircraft. Again, at 144 scale, that's still going to be quite a big kit. Uh, not a particular subject that I have an interest in, but I'm sure there will be people out there interested to see that one. We then move down to 1200th scale. And interestingly, I love kit to have a release here and it's a ship, which I don't believe they have many of. I think they've got three out in 200 scale already. And this is the USS Michael Murphy, which again, just seems a little bit out of the blue to, to add to this. 200 scale for ships is a big scale. So again, this is going to be a big kit. It's not out of the realms of what ZY do overall, but it's kind of an unusual release, I would say, for I Love Kit, who don't have that many kits out there already. Tend to be focused on armour. There are some ship kits there, but again, we'll see. With Trumpeter, however, we have more, let's say, traditional release from them, as we have a whole series of 1200 scale aircraft. Now, these are really produced to go alongside those same ship kits that I mentioned, especially the carriers. So we have the M6A Aichi float plane, the F1M2 float plane, the Chinese Z20 and the SH-60 Seahawk. So these two tend to be a little bit simplified, these kits, and I'll talk more about those in 350 and 700 scale as well. But again, there aren't many options out there other than what you get in a kit, which tend to be very simplified uh, versions of, of aircraft. So these tend to be what people buy and often add you know, brass or whatever to them to really get the detail there. We then also have uh, three Fletcher class destroyers from Trumpeter, that is the USS Fletcher itself, the Sullivans and the Stevens. We'll see if these arrive. As we'll see later, there are quite a few of these kits which are announced and then just don't happen for a long time. But again, I'm sure there'll be people out there looking at these and uh, looking at them with some anticipation. Dropping down again to 1 350th scale, we start with Hobby Boss and now we have the uh, People's Liberation Army Navy Type 093 submarine. So they do have a few submarines in this range already from Hobby Boss. There isn't a Type 93, so this is obviously just adding to their existing range. And if you're into submarines uh, in this scale, again, I'm sure a welcome addition. We then go back to I Love Kit with a, another ship release, and this is the USS Sullivan's. So we've just seen the Sullivan's in 1 200th scale released by Trumpeter. Now we're seeing a 1 350th scale from I Love Kit. So again, 
Similar kind of strategy that we see is a subject, often in one scale, released at a different scale under a different brand name, but they're all the same um, base company. Trumpeter then finishes off with the Alouette, the Gazelle, and the F-35C aircraft. I can see the F-35C, the Lightning II, being quite a popular one because it's used on a lot of modern aircraft carriers, pretty much almost exclusively for uh, most of the Western navies. And there are some releases, again, which, which support that. We then have some interesting ones with the Deutsche Kriegsmarine, Scharnhorst and Gleisnau, the pocket battleships, as they were termed during World War II by the British. These, again, are going to be big kits in, in 1 350th scale. These were pretty big, heavy cruisers, you know, with very heavy armament, hence the pocket battleship. And 350th scale, they're going to be sizable. To go against those, we have the HMS Argonaut, Naid, and Scylla. Those are all Dido-class light cruisers from the British. And again, we'll see if they actually come up, because I think these kinds of things are often promised by Trumpeter and the other brands, and sometimes not realised, or at least not realised for several years. Stepping down to 1700 scale, a more traditional kind of naval scale, from Hobby Boss, we have quite an unusual one, the RMS Titanic mail ship. Now... Not quite sure what the distinction is. I don't know a huge amount about ships. But again, if you want to add to your ship collection, and this is something that you've been looking for, Hobby Boss are now releasing it, apparently. And then for Trumpeter, we have a whole bunch of, of aircraft. We have the Fairy Swordfish, the A4 Skyhawk, the F-35B. Again, I think that'll be useful for, for a lot of modelers. The Fulmer, the Skewer, the F-8 Crusader, the UH-2B, the Has-3, EH-101, the E-1B, and the EA-1F. So a whole slew of 700 scale aircraft for those of you who have 700 scale aircraft carriers and actually want particular subjects to go on those. So if you did want some F-35s to go somewhere, Trumpeter also announced a Queen Elizabeth aircraft carrier, uh, the UK Queen Elizabeth and Prince Charles although the Prince Charles has had a lot of problems. Both aircraft carriers, which of course carry the F-35 and at 700 scale, I'm not sure what the uh, noticeable differences are between the B and the C, but you have that, that option there. And then a couple of US carriers, uh, both the USS Langley, but in her CV-1 and her AV-3 iterations. Rounding us off from Trumpeter are the Zulong Icebreakers, so the Zhulong 1 and the Zhulong 2. And then finally, from Hobby Boss, we step down to almost getting into war game scale, the 1 1250th scale USS New York. Quite an unusual one from, from my perspective. 1 1250 is quite a small scale. There's not a huge amount of detail at that scale. Um, I don't know what the strategy behind it is, but that's where we leave off on new toolings. Now, although we've only just covered the new tool release announcements for ZY, this is already longer than my other release videos, so that's all I'm going to cover in this video, and I'll come back again tomorrow with the rest of the releases in a second part. That's all for this instalment of Man's Model Moments. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel for more like it, and share this video with others you think would also enjoy it. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook, and if you're feeling generous then I also have a Patreon, which is absolutely the best way of helping me to grow the channel and produce more content like this. With that, I hope you have plenty of modelling moments of your own, and I look forward to welcoming you on the next video.